Hello, this is Barbara Nicolato, Nick Snacks, from Del Bello's design team. Gel plates can be so much fun, and today we're going to take a look at some techniques where we can add textures and interest in making backgrounds. For today's project, I'm going to be using Lavinia A4 size cardstock, and I have some sheets here. I have some sheets that I've cut in half and I also have some multi-fares cardstock with inks that have actually gone awry that I haven't really used them for anything and I don't deem them acceptable so as to not waste the cardstock I'm going to try to reuse this and we'll see if I can come up with something that's usable and acceptable I'm going to be using a brayer, and if you have one, that's great. If you have more, the more the better. I'm going to be using some inks and some paint. I've got heavy body acrylic in black and in white, and I have a few more tubes, raw sienna, bright aqua green, and brilliant blue. I don't know if I'll be using all those colors, but... They're out and ready. I've got some Elements inks by Lavinia. This is Lime Punch, Blue Lagoon, and Violet Chalk. I'm also going to be using a wood block, and this measures three and a half inch square, and it's uh, two inches high. I have some dies. And I'm going to be using these with my die cut machine. If you have one, great. If you don't, that's okay because we can still make something with scissors later. I've got rubber bands. This is a, uh, a cardboard roll. It had a large ribbon wrapped around it. I'm going to be using that. And then I sort of looked around the house for other odds and ends and things that I could use, um, such as paper clips. You could use bottle caps, buttons, bubble wrap, brick brack. I've got uh, some of this, and I have some bubble wrap. You're going to be needing a palette knife, some texture paste. I'm going to incorporate this Lavinia stencil called Glory. I also will be using a stylus scissors. The Art Glitter Designer dries clear glue with this small um, mini tip and the stainless steel needle to keep it closed and I will be using my glue gun and this is something else I think I could put to use here. So we're going to be creative and we're going to explore how to make uh, different textures and prints on gel plates. I'll also be using some of these uh, foam sheets that I got at a local craft store and I'm going to make sure I have plenty of paper towels on hand to clean up my messes. And you should also have some type of inexpensive paper or inexpensive printer paper to clean up the gel plates as we go along. I've also pulled a piece of um, acetate paper so that I can roll my brayer on here to get some excess paint off of it. I'm going to start getting my shapes ready for the texture block. I'm cutting freehand shapes out of the foam sheets. If you don't own a die cutting machine and dies, this is a good way for you to make stamp shapes without one. Use your imagination regarding what type of shape you'd like and don't forget to incorporate abstract as well. I also use my stylus to add lines and dots to my foam shapes to give it a little added interest. Thank you. 
Now I will start to assemble my texture block. I'm going to affix the foam pieces I've die cut as well as the ones I've hand cut to my wooden block. Even though the foam sheet has a self-adhesive side, I decided to use my glue to ensure the pieces will stay onto the wood. I'm using a few strips of the rhinestone ribbon on one side of my block. These will be used to create evenly spaced dots on my gel plate. I'm forming squiggly shapes with the glue from my hot glue gun. These will dry fast and be very easy to remove from the Teflon craft mat I'm working on. I'm also creating a raised surface on my block using the Glory stencil and the texture paste. This will require a few hours to dry onto the wood. And in retrospect, although it worked as a stamp, it did not produce as good of a quality as I expected. Being careful not to touch the wet paste, I proceed to glue the squiggly shapes onto the side of my wood block. I've chosen not to add items such as the bubble wrap, plastic crosshatch, and rubber bands to my wood block, but rather to use them separately. While I waited for the texture paste to dry, I made another texture block with a few more items on it. I also had a play with pulling magazine pictures from the gel plate. I'm including these here as a bonus to this video tutorial. This is a fun technique with which many people find difficulty achieving success. I was one of these people. I will give you a few tips that may help. Firstly, Pictures with lots of contrast work best, meaning true black and white without gray tones. Or images with lots of toner are the best to use. Magazine pictures seem to work best, followed by laser printer images. And images printed with an inkjet printer are usually the worst to use. I prefer Liquitex acrylics. Make sure the acrylics you use are labeled heavy body. These work best. Also make sure it's a thin layer you're applying to the gel plate. You should be able to see through it. The more you roll the brayer over the gel plate, the thinner the acrylic gets. Next, Place your magazine image face down over the gel plate and use the brayer to apply even pressure over it. Then discard the magazine page. Next, choose a lighter color of heavy body acrylic. This will be used to wet the gel plate and pull the print. I've chosen bright aqua green. Remember, the first color you lay down on the gel plate will take the place of the darkest color of the image you've chosen. The second color you lay down on the gel plate will be the fill-in for the lighter color on your chosen image. Just make sure this second layer of acrylic is thin. You should be able to pretty much see through it. If you can't, that means there's too much acrylic paint and you will not be able to pull the print. With this particular image, I've chosen white paper to pull the print. You could even use paper that already has an ink design on it. Try to experiment. I am using even pressure to rub my hand across the paper, making sure I pass over the entire gel plate. This is how I ensure the gel plate print will be transferred to my paper. I will put this aside to use in a later project. This shows you how thin the ink layer must be before placing the magazine picture down. Here I've inserted another quick clip of this same process using this photo of a mama leopard. With a brayer, roll a thin layer of ivory black heavy body acrylic onto the gel plate. Place the magazine picture over it and press down. Discard the magazine picture. Roll a thin layer of raw sienna 
heavy body acrylic on top. To lift the print, place paper over the gel plate and rub with your hands or a brayer. Lift and voila! And now it's time to play with our wooden texture block. I rolled brilliant blue and bright aqua green onto the gel plate, then proceeded to stamp the various items onto the gel plate. The cross hatch leaves its print. The rubber bands wrapped around the cardboard tube leaves haphazard lines here and there, while the bubble wrap leaves circles. I'm using water and a paper towel to clean off the gel plate. Now I've switched over to the 5 by 7 inch gel plate with Lavinia Elements inks. Lime Punch, Blue Lagoon, and Violet Chalk will be my colors of choice here. As you'll see, some very pretty backgrounds will result. I'm switching back to blue acrylic on the gel plate and topping it with the Lavinia Glory stencil. I'm using a sheet of cardstock to rub off the exposed paint, and that cardstock can be reused with another design later. Soaking my stencil in a pan of water will make for easy cleaning later on. Then I'm going to brayer over with green. This will fill in the parts where I removed the blue paint. Let's take a look at some of the backgrounds we've created. Of course I will trim these down and we'll use some for cards, journaling, and multimedia projects. These are the leaves I pulled from a magazine picture. I've added the peony stamp from Sweet Poppy Stencils and colored it with Distress Watercolor Pencils. To the leopard print, I added the Lavinia 173 Willow Stamp at the top. To this one, I added the Dragonfly Bloom Stamp by Sweet Poppy and watercolored them. I cut this textured background down to a 5x7 and stamped Jalandar stamp, which is Lavinia 634. On this background I used the Fairies 469 Twilight 
422 Eden and Pippin the Rabbit number 581 all Lavinia I bordered this one with a set called Autumn Leaves by Sweet Poppy Stencils it's not quite finished as I think I should add something in the middle I hope this video gave you some new ideas and inspiration. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We'd love for you to visit our online store for your crafting needs and check below the video for a list of supplies used. Finally, if you don't already belong to our Facebook groups, please consider joining us where you can get ideas and share your creations. Have a happy crafting day.